include everything. Hey guys, so we are back in Solo Learn CSS. And as you see, I already finished this, but I forgot to turn the mic on, so we are redoing it. Um, hopefully, I remember I haven't touched this in about two weeks. So we're going to be talking about transitions. Uh, now when you have CSS, you can transition from one CSS styling to another over a duration period using background color, width, height, opacity, and many other properties. Um, function is, wait, which of the following is not parameter as transition property? Duration, function, property, type. There we go. So you can see you set the width over three seconds hover to 250 pixels and you can see it's slowly transitioning over here my cat's going crazy because there is a lizard outside the window it's very distracting <laughs> sorry about that guys so when you want to set these things you define the property you also uh so background dash color transition five seconds and then ease it in Excuse me, transition. Oh my God, there's a cat. Transition background. So you set the transition property, the element or the property you want to set over what period of time, and then you ease it in. You also have, a, so you have the ease, ease in, ease out, ease in and out, linear, cubic, bezier, transition timing function. You can see right here. Cubic Bazir will be what allows you to set up your own custom functions. Transform and rotate. So before we're talking about just going left to right, up to down, but you can also rotate images using, uh, you have to put degrees in as well, 10 degrees. So it takes in angles. And then you can do negative values if you want to go in the opposite direction. You just put negative 10 degrees like so. So if you want to do it counterclockwise, it will be a rotate negative 45 degrees. And then uh, transform, origin, translate, and skew. More things that you can do. So you can have like, this is your starting point, and then you're gonna transform it based off of that. Uh, I believe center is the default value here. And then you also have translate where you wanna move something like so, 100 pixels to the right, 50 pixels down. So if you wanna translate, it goes uh, 100 and then 50, goes top then bottom. Oh, excuse me, uh, 50 then 100. So it goes, let's read this. 50 pixels from the left, so it goes left then top. Got it. I always get those things confused. I expect to be learning quite a bit, even though I've done this section, just because uh, I, I very, very rarely use transitions. I probably should. It makes your website look so much better. So you can also skew elements. So you want to have a nice sort of style aspect. You can skew it by 30 degrees like so. So you're doing that with degrees as well. You can do multiple transformations as well as scale things smaller or larger based on your needs. So you can transform it and scale it. So uh, length and width, if you want them to be the same, you know, transform evenly, you obviously want both your, um, your parameters to be the same. So if we wanted to scale it to 0.2 of its original size, we do it like so. You also uh, rotate and then translate. And you can do this, you'll notice how we can actually combine these, but there's no commas, just spaces when you call transform. So make sure that you just put the spaces in there. Keyframes and animation. So what keyframes are kinda almost, people might get angry at me for calling them variables. They're kind of like variables. And you can see right here, you name it, your keyframe is name as example, and you set some values here like so. So keyframes hold the style elements you want, you have at certain times. So I, I equate them to CSS variables for certain instances. So keyframe values, I guess. At 0%, it's red. At 50%, it's yellow. At 70, blue. And then 100, green. Can you have multiple keyframes in an animation property? 
I believe so, if I understand the question, because that's exactly what we just showed. You can also use from to two. So let's say you always are going to go zero to 100. You can start from, if you use from, it's going to assume that you're starting at zero percent and two going up to 100 percent. So from can be used to replace the zero percent. You can also name these things. So let's say you have an animation name color change where you're basically going to call this keyframe and then you're going to assign it into this div like so. And then in this example, it's showing what the animation duration is. So at 0% it starts off at red, at half a second or half the duration, it's green and then blue. Um, fill in the blank to define an animation called anim at keyframes. So you have to define the keyframes as we saw in the last example. You have animation properties, color change, uh, color duration so you see again that we're assigning the value like so oh my god the web kit I forgot this one so this is what happens when you forget so five seconds you're gonna have 5s like so web kit to make the animation complete in five seconds let's get a hint real quick oh animation dash duration the WebKit threw me off. It scared me for a second. Animation properties. You also put a delay on it. So maybe you don't want the animation to trigger as quick as possible. You go ahead and throw a, a two second delay on it like so. Or you want to delay it. So if we want a two second delay, you 2S on it. You can also do an infinite or forever uh, count on it. So if you want something to go on infinitely long, you can do it with infinite. You also have alternate, reverse. Uh, so if you want to go from 100% to 0%, that's another option as well. So this is infinite to, for the animation to continually repeat. One way you may do this is maybe you have a spinning icon that you always want to spin. So you can see right here that we have all these properties in our div here regarding animation name, duration, timing function, delay, iteration count, direction. Similar to how you would set just a border instead of border color, border style, you can do the same thing with just an animation tag. You just gonna make sure you do them in order. So the name, duration, et cetera, et cetera. So animation dash name, animation dash duration, animation dash time, no, animation dash, what was the two seconds? All right, let's, let's jump back and cheat real quick. Iteration count, delay, animation dash delay, and then direction cool so we have so uh start that which runs after two seconds so we have our our function our name here so our animation name is size change uh, which starts after two seconds and runs for five seconds that's duration the delay and then loops forever that would be infinite 3D transforms. Now, this is stuff I've never worked with, so I this I really don't know. But um, so you have the Z axis. So X axis goes left to right. Horizontal axis, uh, the Y axis is, or vertical axis, excuse me, is top to bottom, bottom to top. And then there's the kind of um, Z axis where you can kind of treat things that transform in a three dimensional, give some sort of like width, uh, like this. You know what I mean? length height width kind of think of it like that so if you want to rotate around the z axis it'd be rotate z so you have you'll see right here the normal div element so you transform x and y you can rotate 3d scale 3d so you can scale all these things and rotate them uh, in a three-dimensional way as well so if you want to translate 100 pixels back that would be negative 100 pixels in the Z on the on the translate Z so you can you can do basically all the not all but the bulk of the animation functions on the Z axis as well you can see rotate X right here so now you kind of have this sort of Star Warsy feel going off into the distance here by rotating uh, 45 degrees on the X axis and giving it some perspective so this, uh, the perspective, one thing to note is this is pretty important is you can only per provide perspective on something that is a 3D um, 
CSS property. So you have to be treating it like that. So the higher the perspective value, the bigger the edges of the rotating box. I got this one wrong last time. I don't think I fully understand what they're asking. And then let's go ahead and do our quiz. Which of the it, which of these is a valid CSS3 transformation statement? Modify, stimulate, scale would be it. You can scale images and, and uh, CSS prop attribute. No, CSS. CSS. Let's <laughs> we'll leave it at CSS. How will an element with a statement transform translate from zero or 100 pixels behave? How will an element with a statement transform translate zero? It's going to go from zero. So I believe it's going. To, it goes left and then it goes from the top. So it's going to be pushed down 100 pixels. There we go. And then which transfer transformation does not exist in CSC? Rotate X, translate Z, rotate 3D or skew B. I think is it. I don't know what skew B is. Fill in the blanks to rotate an object with the ID ball. So it's going to be hashtag ball. Uh, rotates counterclockwise 45 degrees. So this is going to be transform, rotate negative 45 degrees. Oh my God, I, I put it in wrong. Spell checks, man, spell checks. Uh, so ball, transform, rotate negative 45 degrees. Spelt it right that time. And finally, fill in the blanks to make the first letter. Oh man, they're bringing it way back. So I believe this is colon first dash child. Oh, is it just, no, right here it's first child. First, so the first letter or first child of our paragraph tag, we wanna set the color to red and the font dash weight to bold. And then here, flip the paragraph by 180 degrees, so we're gonna transform it as well. I think that's it. Huh, so that didn't work. So let's try, let's fill it out and get a little hint. I thought it was first child, but apparently I was wrong. First child, color, red, and then we have um, font dash weight, and we'll go get a, not first child, we'll get a hint right here. First item, let's get another hint. Let's see what's going on here. First letter, silly me. Um, that's what happens when you forget uh, some of these things. But uh, as always, I hope this was a good reminder, good refresher. I apologize I stumbled through these last two sections. This is my own shortcomings as a developer. I need to get better at CSS and CSS3. And I uh, this actually helped me a lot to kind of um, get comfortable with and I hope to be using a lot of these uh, animations in my future projects but as always guys thank you for watching the video if you want to support me you can go to patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360 and if you're interested in joining our coding Facebook group code tech and caffeine the link is in the description below thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next video hey guys thanks for watching the video if you're interested in coding bootcamp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching